Now we have Patrick Michel. He's going to talk about A. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I only have 10 minutes, so I'm going to skip some of the slides. I thought I had 15. So yeah, this is an update about this uh, asteroid impact mission, which you know uh, has been studied uh, in ESA, and we are continuing the study. And basically here, I'm going to talk about the relevance for asteroid mining, and tomorrow, Michael Cooper is at the Planetary Defense Session. We'll talk about it for the uh, Planetary Defense Relevance. So as you know, this uh, mission started as an ESA-NASA cooperation, where you had a, a projectile developed by NASA called DART, which is now in phase B, which will shoot on an asteroid, and the uh, uh, asteroid impact mission would be there to observe the outcome of the impact and to measure the deflection and also characterize the whole body. So the main target is, uh, is Didymos, it's a binary asteroid as you know. Uh, the primary is about 780 meters in size and the secondary is about 163 meters in size. And the, the, the point is to shoot on the uh, secondary 163 meters in order to uh, uh, measure the uh, difference in the uh, orbit around the primary. So actually this target is a, is a, is a good uh, size. As uh, Martin was saying, we are looking at uh, 20, I'm not sure, I think it's a little small for mining because it's hard to deal with, but maybe. But in the 100 meter size range, it's a good, good uh, number because we have uh, enough uh, bodies, uh, possibly, uh, uh, and they are accessible. So aim would be uh, uh, good because it will allow to characterize an object in the size range which is relevant for mining. Uh, and in fact, it's just uh, to give you again a general context that we have all these bodies for which we have an image. So first is Vesta, 530 kilometers. Actually, now we have Ceres, which is a 950 kilometer. It's also a dwarf planet. And we go down to Itokawa, which is about 320 meters in size. So we have a wide range of sizes for which we have already images. But uh, we see already from there that uh, they are very, very different in diversity, in uh, structure, in particular, and composition. And then uh, uh, we don't have any, actually, information, direct information on the, the detailed property of the regolith, except for the few of them, uh, in particular Itokawa, uh, on which uh, we got a sample, also Eros, and some images of Lutetia, of course, uh, Vesta. But this is very, uh, 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 it's a problem because actually the regolith, of course, is very different from a very big object to a very small one because the gravity conditions are very different. So we need to know a little more about that. Of course, for composition, we already talked about it, so uh, I, I won't go into that. What I want to say is that we'll have the next year the, the great uh, thing that we'll have a new uh, images of a very new world. We never saw a Carbonaceous type with a, a lot of details. We had a flyby of Mathilde in the main belt, but here we will uh, take samples of Ryugu and Bennu with Osiris and Hayabusa too. We'll have detailed images, so we'll know a little more, I mean, much more, sorry about these uh, bodies in this size range. And uh, if we go to Didymos, then we go again three times less uh, in, the, in the size of the bodies, and therefore this is another step in the low gravity level. So that will allow us to really understand how all the processes and all the things that we see on the surface scale with gravity, which is very important because for uh, mining, if you want to go to 100 meter size objects, you need to, to understand that. So it's really gr great to have this uh, comparison. Then, of course, we need to understand also how the surface reacts to an external action. And for AIM, uh, so we'll have a, a, a CubeSat. One option could be to uh, end the CubeSat by uh, you know, simply letting it go on the surface and see how it bounces, because actually any uh, interaction with the surface will allow us to learn a lot. And of course, we'll have the DART impact, which also allows us to understand how these uh, uh, bodies respond to a hypervelocity impact. So for the AIM history, as you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, the mission was not approved at the ESA uh, Ministerial Council of 2016. Uh, but there was still a large interest of some member states. So uh, what we tried to do is to uh, concentrate on a lower cost version of this uh, mission. And, uh, and in fact, focus on what is essential for deflection, which, by the way, the same thing as what is essential for mining. So that's why uh, uh, it's a good thing. And uh, we call it AIM-D2 for AIM deflection demonstration and was born. So the difference with the uh, original uh, um, mission was that there is no optical communication system. There is no lander. There is no radar in principle. We have just one CubeSat simple operation and a launch which is postponed to 2022-23 instead of 2020. 
so we basically arrive uh, after the dart impact. So we only lose actually the observation of the ejecta, but all the other objectives can be met because essentially what we want to do in order to interpret the dart impact is to measure the crater properties, uh, characterize the target, uh, and get in particular the mass of the moon, of DD moon. And this can be done uh, even years after the dart impact happened. Of course, it would be even better if we were there at the same time, but it's not crucial, I would say. So this is a team that we have. Uh, we have Michael Cooper that will present tomorrow the mission in the planetary devastation. We have uh, Andy, uh, Andy Chang and Rifkin. We are representing uh, the NASA team, the DART team. And we have these uh, two, uh, two instruments, the framing camera and the CubeSat aspect, which are the baseline instrument. This is uh, said here. Uh, so that will be the first deep, CubeSat, cube, uh, deep space CubeSat. Thomas Kuhut will just talk about it afterwards, so I don't uh, uh, go more about that. We have the aim framing camera, which is uh, kindly provided by Olga Sirks. And we have as optional payload uh, a near infrared spectrometer, a LiDAR, and a radio science experiment. I should also add a uh, high frequency radar, because uh, there is one which is uh, under design in Grenoble and could be uh, funded by some member states. And I think it would be nice because we don't have any information of the subsurface structure of an asteroid. And this is, of course, very important uh, if you want to understand how to mine them. So I should, um, I should add it here, but I didn't have time. So as you know, uh, so this is basically the framing camera, which is, uh, was under test at the GMV company in Spain, which uh, made some uh, GNC uh, uh, simulation with a real camera. Uh, the point is to measure the mass of the, of the asteroid, and for this we'll measure the, the wobble uh, and the binary, and that uh, needs to be done with an accuracy of around one meter. And of course, we, uh, you can get then a, a mass measure to accuracy of 10%, uh, which is enough to interpret the dart impact, but we can go even higher in accuracy with the radio science experiment. Then we have the aspect uh, CubeSat that we, Thomas will uh, talk about. So we will arrive now in uh, about 2026, if we uh, launch in 2023, we could launch maybe one year earlier and, uh, and arrive uh, earlier. And then uh, the point is to deploy the CubeSat and make some spectral measurements. With the camera, measure the, 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 the properties of the asteroid, the physical properties, measure the mass, with also radio science, infer some properties about the internal structure, thanks to radio science, and maybe to a high frequency ra ra radar if it is there. And then, of course, uh, measure the uh, 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 crater's properties that allow us to uh, uh, verify the numerical model of impact that are used to uh, prepare uh, uh, kinetic impact mission scenarios. So this is uh, basically the, the, the mission that we now propose. There is an even simpler mission, which we call AIM Next, which is uh, even simpler. So basically, we look uh, at uh, any reachable target with uh, either a smaller launcher or a launcher uh, Ariane 5 with a GTO. And uh, in that case, we have a target called uh, a 2001 QJ142, which is, uh, we don't know, exactly the size, it's a small one, between 15 and 50, 100 meters. Uh, we know the rotation rate, it's a super fast rotator, less than 10 minutes. So that's actually very interesting also scientifically to see how a super fast rotator look like. Uh, it seems to be elongated. Uh, we don't have a spectral type. So basically we don't know much about it and this is exactly the, the kind of target that is also interesting for mining. So that's, uh, that's something. The only thing, of course, is that we, uh, we lose uh, uh, the kinetic impact uh, uh, um, interpretation, which I think is also very important for planetary defense. So AIM is relevant for mining. I think, uh, I, I mean, I already said uh, everything of these. We'll have uh, all the physical characterization of a, of, a, of a body of a size which is relevant for mining. We'll know better how, uh, basically, uh, the, 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 the surface behave in a low-gravity environment. And uh, I would also say that for Europe it's very important because as you know, there is no asteroid mission plan in Europe within the next decades. Uh, the soonest could be M5, but that's uh, uh, actually very optimistic. It should be more like 2030 or 2035. So if we don't want to lose all the expertise that we have in Europe, we have a big community. This is our only opportunity, so it's very important to have it. And of course, for the young generation, I'm currently ver fighting very hard to inspire young people for science and knowledge, because we need that instead of the, them going and the bomb themselves. And for this, of course, uh, asteroid missions are very good, because uh, uh, you know, even for a mission which is not selected, you have a lot of media coverage. And when it is selected, you do Hollywood movies. So it's even better. Thank you.